Akina, it's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm really glad to be here. You know, at a fairly young age, you had a very interesting journey. Uh, as an engineer, you, you know, uh, went to Google, then went to YouTube, started your own company, sold it to Groupon, and now you're trying to look for the next adventure. Yes. At the same time, you are mentoring and advising other entrepreneurs. Uh, so there's a gamut of things we can cover. Uh, to start with, for emerging entrepreneurs, uh, there's always uh, you know, the yin and the yang effect. One is, if they are comfortable at a big company like you are, should we just go across uh, to do a new startup or should we be in our own comfort zone and climb the corporate ladder? At what stage uh, you know, uh, do you get this feeling that, you know, well, now is the right time or when do you take that jump? I think uh, the right time is when you're ready, right? I think uh, there is, I mean, there's a lot of value to doing the whole corporate growth strategy. Uh, climbing the corporate ladder, somebody has to run that, and there is a lot of value in starting a company or joining a small company. It really is, uh, I think both the journeys are equally valid and good. The, the thing is that what is, the, what is it that you identify with, right? Intrinsically, we all know where we are in terms of, uh, you know, whether we are a restless soul that wants to do a company, that's generally the characterization, or are we, uh, you know, more, uh, happier and would be more happier in a corporate structured environment and uh, I think you can be entrepreneurial in a corporate co corporate environment you can be very corporate in a, in a startup environment it won't really fly very well but the other is definitely true so I think uh, the right time is when you feel ready and uh, the uh, the only reason to do it is if you really want to do it that's kind of what I feel when you uh, were at two big companies Google and YouTube and the challenges were very different. Mm -hmm. The scale uh, was similar in some sense because they both had, you know, a big ramp to go to cross. Mm -hmm. uh, wanted to learn from you uh, one or two challenges that you faced, and that really helped you understand uh, the corporate structure better, and also the technology seemed much better. So I think uh, when I joined Google, it was still a sub, like around 2,000 people. So it's not wasn't the 60,000 person joined it's today. Um, it was going through, uh, I mean, my background is technical, so I was brought, brought in as a product manager to manage search internationally. And uh, it was, I mean, there is, it is, like with any company, right, of any size, you spend a half your time dealing with product and core technology issues. And then when you start, you're also trying to understand the navigate people, right? And I think that, uh, just that journey, I repeat it again when YouTube was acquired by uh, Google and I was one of the two or three management people brought into uh, my role was to take it international right again it's always it's a combination of people and technology and if you can build the right people set which includes like you know building the right relationships building the right uh, culture building the right atmosphere I mean the technology with smart people almost takes care of itself I think the biggest uh, pain point uh, the entrepreneurs face I think the moment they leave a mother's womb, which is a big corporation, mm -hmm. uh, suddenly they are out of support, out of uh, resources. Uh, that's a very tough time. Uh, how do you prepare an entrepreneur to go through that rough ride? It's a very tough time, right? So um, it's uh, it's interesting because I have lots of friends who have talked about me leaving a company and a lot of people when you first leave, it's like suddenly you don't have an admin who's going to take care of something, right? There's trash piling up in your office and like, hey, you know, you're the last one leaving, take it out, right? So it's just small things. If you don't pay the um, bill on time, like your, you know, your lease on time, you know, you will get a 30-day eviction notice because you forgot and that's just the way it is. I think, um, you know, for a, for a, these are things that are just small challenges if you're passionate about what you want to build and if you really are dedicated towards it. Um, I was speaking in the panel earlier too and it's like, you know, entrepreneurship is all about management of like, you know, there's going to be high times and low times. It's really about how you manage those times effectively. And uh, that's, uh, that's really what is important. And I think um, leaving, it's, it's like you're leaving home for the first time. Right when you leave and go to college or you go to school, you, you, know, you leave home for the first time. It's kind of the same feeling. You know, then you move out of a comfort zone, but you have to. Um, I think starting a company today, the, a lot of the operational stuff and all of that is very well taken care of. Like you, if you find the right people to support you, I think you can, you know, you, you can get by that. But um, the only reason you should be doing companies because you want to do it, and then this is just you know part, you know, just part of it, the journey.
Uh, let's talk about the startup. Uh, one is to finding uh, a niche in the market, a need that you can address to. The second is, uh, you know, when you raise your money, obviously there's uh, friends and family and your own money. Uh, but when you, before you actually go to raise money from other people, uh, sales is the biggest challenge. Mm -hmm. uh, people don't realize this. Just an idea is not going to cut out anymore. Definitely. Uh, so want to learn from you uh, how big and how easy it was for you to do the sales challenge. I think um, a lot of the sub, it's basically, why do people invest in startups, right? It's uh, at a very early seed stage. It's really in people, right? Then what you need for startup success is a people, a good idea, and la right timing, right? Whether it's like the market is ready, and these are some of the ingredients that go into making a successful startup. In our case, I mean, you know, I, I had a great co-founder who basically, you know, had raised half the round, and I joined, and we uh, accelerated the round very quickly. Um, most of that came from angels who knew us or knew our work from both of us collectively. And I think that is instrumental in getting to the right kind of funding and being able to articulate and pitch your idea or your product extremely clearly. You have to know what you're building better than anybody else, right? Because most VCs don't really have the bandwidth to go deep into anything you're doing, but you have to know it better than anybody else. And I think these two uh, things together will help you sell in the very early stages. I'm not talking about Series A, Series B, but when you're really this genesis of the idea, that's when you basically, that's what I feel. Okay. So I think uh, we didn't have sales when we went to raise money because we were a consumer product. So our metric for success was not sales, actually. It was really you know, a product market fit and validation. That was really the metric for success. That was what we were judged on, like what was our user numbers, how well, how well our pilot was doing. So um, in consumer tech, it's a little bit different. It's not uh, enterprise, so you're not really, you don't really have a sales cycle. If you get the right product and if you ha can have at least even two users extra week over week, you're considered pretty good trajectory. So, I think I, I don't know if you're giving the right hope to people. Because <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm not saying the two user thing. Paul Graham talks about it. Okay. <laughs> Um, but uh, exiting a company is another big challenge. Mm -hmm. uh, at the right valuation, at the right time is important. Yes. There's always this big hope that it could be a unicorn, mm -hmm. uh, but you can't keep banking on it uh, because, yes. you know, uh, uh, like they say, a bird in the hand is better than a 12 later on. So I just wanted to, uh, final point is, you know, uh, you don't have to go into the numbers. But uh, when did you feel comfortable that this is the right time for me? So I think it was ours was a unique s unique situation. We uh, we were trying to solve a very big problem. It was about you know uh, the the core of that came from a bunch of work that um, uh, Naveen had, my co-founder Naveen had done with Rajiv Motwani, and uh, in terms of uh, what does search mean in the social age, it was a big idea. A lot of people were trying to solve for this, and Google was also trying to do it in its own way through Google Plus. Right, so uh, we looked at where the market was going, and we 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 were we had built great technology. We had a fantastic product, but we also were you know um, we looked at where the market was heading, and there was like all the big players were very very focused on it. And uh, when we started thinking about whether should we should raise a Series A or you know we should do this, we had a we had a term sheet for A, we had an LOI, right? And we looked at all the. Um, you know where the team was, where the market was, and what we and what the promise of what we could do at with, at the company that was acquiring us. Uh, we felt it was the right time. So I think there's no real formula. You have to kind of be uh, aware of the market dynamics. You have to be very clear and realistic about where you are and what your options are. And at the same time, you know if you can find a the right partner, the right acquirer, I think uh, those would be the kind of you know. Uh, well, levers you have to kind of look at when you decide to sell. Well, thank you for spending your time. Thank you. And congratulations on the success and wishing you more in the future. Thank you very much.